right, so say let's start off talking about Graham Smith. Now, his tenure as the director of cricket has come to an end at Cricket South Africa and his contract has not been renewed. Overall, what do you make of what he's done during this period where he has been the director of cricket? Look, uh, it, it's a little difficult for me to comment on it, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Because I was one of the one of the applicants who also was on the short list when I applied. So, <clears throat> you know, it, it's a little difficult for me to, to comment uh, objectively on it. But suffice to say that I think he was the first director of cricket, and being the first one, it was really about laying the foundation. You know? One of the first things he did do, and I think. Um, which came under a lot of scrutiny was the appointment of Mark Boucher, which was the head coach. And I think that alone was, um, it wasn't a great start from his side, particularly because it, it's a well known fact that uh, Grant Smith and Mark Boucher are good friends. Uh, in addition to that, the appointment was, was made without, uh, without apparently, uh, without interviews, without advertising the position, and of course, at the time, Mark Boucher was not a level three or a level four qualified coach. In fact, I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, he was even qualified. So, um, so I think that wasn't a great start. It came under a lot of scrutiny. Also, it kind of all happened at the time when Cricket South Africa and the board there was a there was a lot of um, a lot going on. So, yeah, it, it's been an interesting time. Let me say that. I think uh, you look at the Proteus team of late; uh, they they begin. They've just started to come right. Well, uh, at this level, they've done well. They've had a good series against India and now they've won that game. So, yeah, I think the team has begun to start to find its feet. They're putting a four together and they look like they're heading in the right direction. I know, Jose, and we also look at how the team has had reasonable success. I mean, there was a series victory here at home against India and away against the West Indies. So, would you say that um, despite everything around his appointment. Mark Boucher has been a good appointment. And um, should the new director of cricket keep him there as um, the head coach or perhaps should the board and the director look elsewhere in terms of putting someone in that position? Um, I, I think the, the one thing we need to be clear about is that, you know, when you're appointing a coach of a national side, uh, you're, not, you're not appointing a coach of a club team. Um, so a national team, you really want to be sure that you have somebody there who's going to bring not only the team in the dressing room, but also the country together. Um, I, I think what you want to be careful about in a position like that is appointing somebody who's going to divide the country, divide the change room, divide the nation. Mark Boucher, whether we like it or not, um, a few things apply when you, when you talk about so one is yes, he has an incredible record. He was a fantastic international player, and he's got, he had a good playing career. He also had a decent coaching career. The reality, however, though, is that because of his track record uh, and a lot of stuff that has come out during the SJN hearings, a lot of stuff that come out from former players who played during the time when Boucher played and then stuck as captain during that year, um, a lot of former players have come out and spoke about it. Like Paul Adams spoke about the theme song, some, some of that stuff is going to come up in the hearing now, in his inquiry. To have somebody in that position as a head coach of your national side who has that history and record hanging over him, whether they correct or not, uh, and in the middle of a court case, a court case which is coming, uh, um, an inquiry which is coming up, and, and apparently a court case, spoke about a court case where players in the change room are going to become, going to be witnesses, or apparently going to be witnesses, then to have somebody like that in charge of your national team, I'm not sure it's a great idea. I think all it does is just, it confuses players, it, it brings a lot more into the change room environment than needs to be there. So it hasn't been easy for the team, it hasn't been easy for Boucher, it hasn't been easy for the public to understand what really is going on. But I, I'm not sure that Boucher should have been appointed in the first place. I'm not sure he should have been, he should have kept his job in the first place after a lot of the stuff that came out. You look at what happened in Yorkshire, for example, Yorkshire cricket, when a lot of the stuff came out, some of the things that happened between coaches, players, etc. immediately a lot of those um, coaches and the coaching staff were either dismissed or they resigned or they stepped aside 
while the inquiry was going on, in order to make sure that the playing environment stays clean and they can focus on cricket. At the moment, I'm not sure it's very easy for the players and anybody else to focus on cricket. And um, Hussein, I know you've touched on the SJN hearings, but just overall, what is your view on this corrective measures that have now been put in place by Cricket South Africa following the recommendations that were made by Advocate and Zabeza? So, so the recommendations that were made, I think the one thing um, that has to be said is that Cricket South Africa have had to act in some way or the other. They had to find a way to do something about it because they, of course, appointed the, in, the inquiry. Yes. Um, you know, I'm not going to comment about the inquiry itself. I was part of it, um, and I thought it was fairly decent. I think a lot of the stuff needed to come out in the interest of moving forward. Cricket South Africa then took a lot of the, um, the, the recommendations, and they, of course, discussed it, they debated it, they digested it. And they're now moving forward with two of the key issues, um, well, there's a few key issues, but two of them being the Smith appointment and the Boucher appointment. And they op they've opened those up and they're having, having inquiries around that. Witnesses are coming forward. And, and I think they're doing the right thing in that because you really want to move forward. As I said, to have your national coach um, having all this hanging over him, I don't think it's fair on the team and I don't think it's fair on the country and everybody that follows cricket. So mm. it's something that needs to be sorted out. And I think Cricket South Africa as the board need to be commended for that. They need to be commended for the fact that they're doing something about it and, and want to move forward and want to move past this. Um, let's just call it a monkey, a monkey on the back. Mm. Hussein, just as I wrap up with you, I've literally got 30 seconds left. I do want to end this interview on a happier note. The state of women's cricket in this country, I mean, really just on an upward curve. But what more can be done to ensure that women are given the same or equal platform as men? I mean, we still don't have a league and we're seeing other countries, Australia, a country that really dominates in terms of women's cricket. They have all these structures in place. How do we get ourselves there as well? So I think a lot of focus um, has been on the national women's team, which rightly so, that's your flagship team. I think importantly, um, I think a lot more focus needs to be put at the grassroots level, uh, at schools, where I think we need a lot more uh, cricketing schools among the girls. So you need girls' schools playing cricket. You need a lot more money invested in there because I don't think your face, when you talk about women's cricket, they've done well at the national level. I think a lot of work has gone into it. And cricket South Africa have to be commended for that. They've done wonderful work. I think a step forward for me would be definitely to grow the pace. And that will start at schools. You need more cricketing schools as like you have boys cricketing schools, you need a lot more girls cricketing schools. And I think if that grows, you'll grow the pace. You have more young girls playing cricket and wanting to play cricket and having the opportunity to play cricket. And when that happens, you'll start seeing the numbers start to grow. And I think uh, South Africa will be a force to be reckoned with. There's no doubt about it. Thank you so much for your time, Hussein. Do have a blessed day further. Thank you very much. That Happy. is, of course, Hussein Manek, former national selector for the South African national team and also now an SABC sport commentator. But as we speak about um, the development of women's cricket, I think it's one that we still need to delve into a little bit further in terms of how are we getting the players that eventually end up playing in the national team. And, of course, that is something that we are hoping CSA will be looking at and focusing on a little bit further.